Sometimes when I've been driving down the road for a few hours, I feel an urge to gamble. I'm not talking about a poker table, a blackjack table, or even a roulette table. No, I'm talking about a supper table. Let me explain. First, I gamble by choosing an exit. Then I gamble when I get off the exit by turning left or right. I continue this game of chance when deciding on a well-known chain restaurant or a local dive. If you know me, you know I usually opt for the local dive. I don't necessarily do this based on a preference, but just to do something different. I call it diving board. Sorry. Recently, I was headed down to Mississippi to visit my daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughters. I got hungry at the wrong time. You see, there are a few exits on that trip, especially when you get to Mississippi, where it is slim pickings when it comes to finding a place to eat. I finally decided to gamble on a local establishment and pulled into their parking lot. According to the picture on the sign, it looked like a good place to get a cheeseburger and fries. However, once I got inside and walked to the counter, I felt as if I had dived into a casino diner of sorts. I further realized that it was now time for the real risky behavior to begin. When I looked at their menu board and saw catfish, I'm pretty sure I heard my taste buds shout, yes. It had been a week or so since I'd had any mud cat and I was ready. <laughs> but then I remembered some words of wisdom that I'd picked up along the way. Don't ever eat sushi from a gas station. That seemed like good advice and probably a little unnecessary since I don't eat sushi. But I have had fried chicken and potato wedges and even pizza from a service station, so I understood where that counsel was coming from. As I stood there at the counter that evening, I wondered how broad the application might be. Was it safe to eat food from a hole in the ground at a hole in the wall? But I was feeling lucky and hungry and not necessarily in that order. So I rolled the dice and ordered the catfish. When my number was up, and I hate to put it that way, I returned to the front and retrieved my tray. As I looked at their version of catfish, I thought to myself, maybe they don't bring it to your table because they want plausible deniability. If something goes wrong, they could just say, we wondered what happened to that tray. Somebody just took it. It also dawned on me that if you take the letter V out of dive, all you have left is dive. And then I wondered if that letter V stood for the voice inside my head that was shouting, it's not too late to turn back. But they had tartar sauce. And I've always heard that the right sauce can cover a multitude of sins. So I sat down and I picked up a piece of fish. Now to be honest with you, I'm calling it fish because that's how the menu described it but I still have my doubts. In fact, when I looked back at the picture advertising the catfish plate, and then I looked at the food in front of me, I felt that I had experienced this word as both a noun and a verb. I had been catfished with catfish. As I studied the outside of my entree, here's what I observed. I could see that it was shaped like a, a small, small fish, maybe a kitten fish, heavily breaded, and slightly burnt. After I took my first bite, I tried to examine the inside. You ever done that? The inside of the fish. But the meat was dark and sparse. In college, the cafeteria served these thin, chewy pork chops that I lovingly refer to as leather billfolds. <laughs> if I had to nickname this plate of faux fish based on appearance, I would call it dehydrated cornbread. That's what it looked like. In all sincerity, I was a little nervous about eating that food. They may not take reservations at that restaurant, but I guarantee a lot of people have had reservations about eating there. As I pondered the situation, I chose to go ahead and eat my supper. But I also decided to take a precautionary measure. I took the receipt and I put it in my top pocket, not for tax purposes, not for reimbursement or a record of my expenses, no, I thought to myself, if I don't make it, when they search my body, they'll find this receipt and understand what happened to me, especially if they're local. 
By putting that receipt in my pocket, I was, and I still have that receipt, I was eating with my future or, or lack of future in mind. And as crazy as it might sound, the Apostle Peter is calling for Christians to do something similar. Let me ask you a question. If anything were to happen to you unexpectedly away from home, would there be anything found on your person or in your possessions that might help identify you? Not what you died of, but what you live for. Who you live for. A book? A Bible? A journal? Text conversations about faith? Something to say that the belt of your mind was fastened. Something to say that you were living with eternity in view. That you were keeping the main thing the main thing. Something to say that spiritually speaking, you had your head in the game. Something to say that you had a Maranatha mentality.